Hey, it's Jennifer here. I just wanted to do a video on pearlized inking with the new Ranger Distress Ink Colors. This is the frame that I made. I just had this favorite photo of mine and I wanted to make something to put up in the house. So I thought I'd do these fun new, fun, uh, new colors on it. So first we have the new Distress Inks. There's new, 12 new colors from Ranger and they, together with the original ones, they kind of round out the color palette. So you have lots of lights and darks and great colors to work together. What I'm going to do today, instead of stamping with the inks, is just apply them directly onto some white cardstock. And I'm working on my craft sheet that, so that I can easily clean up in between each inking. So that first color was Barn Door Red and this one is forest moss this is tumbled glass it's like a light colored broken china and it's nice because you could use this with the darker blue broken china that one of the original colors and they go nicely together this is stormy sky a nice like kind of denim blue color Now this is pumice stone, which is kind of like a gray color that I didn't really think that I would find much use for, but I'll show you later that it works great for like a metallic look. And here you can see Distress Ink slowly dry. You can see it slowly drying there. And these colors will soften and smooth out as they dry. And this is bro uh, Bundled Sage, which is just a gorgeous, good, basic green color. It's really pretty. The next one is Victorian Velvet. Which is kind of like a mauvey pink, but in a really nice shade. And this is um, Wild Honey, which is just a gorgeous kind of caramely color. Now we have Crushed Olive, and again, these will slowly dry and give a nice even coverage. So you can see here it's kind of splotchy and not very even, but once it dries, it'll be perfect. Next up is the Chip Sapphire. This color is just dynamite. It's uh, like a real bright bluish purple and then um, spun sugar which is real soft uh, pink color and then finally I think this is the last one this is rusty hinge um, which dries to a nice um, nice good car caramely orange now I wanted to show you I could also apply these inks with the ink applicator and you can see you get like a softer color um, less intense but it really doesn't matter so here are all my different color swatches and they're going to just dry. You can see they're starting to smooth out a bit. But I want to spray them with a pearlized water and this is how I make it. I use this perfect pearl and I tap it so that the extra powder comes down. And a little bit of this goes a long way. Now I have this mini mister bottle and I fill it about three-fourths full with water. And I'm going to put a few scoops with the back end of my paintbrush into the water. So I'm doing, usually I do two or three. Just depends on how pearly you want the water to be. And here I'm doing three. Now I just shake it up real good and if you see I have a pearl glued to the top of this. I use glossy accents to glue a pearl to the top of it so that I could remember that that one's always my pearlized water. You can see it's glued right there. So it's just to decipher it from my regular uh, mist uh, bottle of water. So now I've got my inked paper and I'm going to spray this to get the pearl going through the, the tube and I'm going to spray it right onto this Distress Ink. Now when Distress Ink comes in contact with water, it stays smooth, it keps its color and you can see how it just gets this pearl eye shine with this water. Now when perfect pearls uh, are mixed with water, they set. You don't have to spray a fixative over this, they won't rub off, the shine will stay. Now with all this extra pearlized water after um, spraying all my squares, you could use this as a water, um, like a watercolor too. And you could just paint it right onto it. Now see how this really lightened after it dried? I just wanted to show you. See that's the, the dried and the original. So this is a EK Success Punch. I love this because it does a double punch. Check out these hearts. That little heart in the inside, one of my favorite heart punches. I'm real picky about my hearts, but this one, I really like that little guy. So that's the punch that I used for this. So I've got this piece. I um, did an 8.5 by 11, and I wanted to show you this um, adhesive. This is the new one I like. you got to make sure you get this exact same one. It's a mono dot adhesive um, from Tombow. And you can see it snaps and easy. It puts down little dots that you can rub away, but it's also permanent. I like the permanent one. And it just goes on good. This 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 specific model doesn't get stuck 
you can see here is exactly the wording that you need as on the package here but it doesn't get stuck it changes easily and I've never had any problems with it it's just like the old adhesive that I used to love so now I'm going to use these 3d um, dots from EK success also and these are my favorite foam dots people always ask about what I like I'm using these in the 1 8 inch they come in 1 16 too and you can see there's small sizes the long piece on the edge and big sizes I'm gonna cut the small into four so I can have really little ones it's kind of gone out of focus here but I'm just cutting them into four so I can have really little ones to put in the center of these hearts that I glued down because I'm gonna make the little heart in the center pop up off of the page so you can see these all have little squares in the center already now if you wanted to have less dimension you could use the sixteenth of an inch foam dots I keep both on hand and I use them equally so now I'm just going to add this I find that if I put the foam dot down and then lay the paper on top of it it does a better job of kind of staying where I want it to be so you can see the dimension you get there. Now I use my silhouette to cut out the title Grateful and you can see it cutting something here. This is the silhouette. There's lots of videos on how to use it and I can do some in the future but just if you, in case you've never seen it this is how it works. You set it up to print to, or to cut and it does it very easily and very quickly and it just gives you great detailed images. Now here are a bunch of shapes that I cut together. I like to keep this little tool handy. It's from Quick Cuts and you just peel off all that space. Now I could have filled all that negative space in with shapes but I just wanted to get these cut quickly. Those other ones I'm going to use here, this clouds and the you and me, I'm going to use on a different project. But you can see the grateful down here. Look how nice that, that, um, that cloud is. Anyways, you can see how easily you just peel them off with the little, um, this little piercer thing. Just kind of hooks it off and look how grateful just comes right off and there I've got my title and I could size it to anything I want using the silhouette. They're nice and detailed, never have any problems with it, um, very addictive piece and there's lots of different shapes and um, words and things that you can cut out, with, cut out with your silhouette. So now this is that pumice stone with the gray color which I didn't really think that I would have much use for but what I'm doing here is I'm covering the entire word with this um, pumice stone. I like to do this is cut all my paper, my um, shapes from the silhouette with white paper and then color them however I want. Now I ink this and I sprayed it with the pearlized water and see how it's shiny? It looks like a faux metal. It's really nice. Now this adhesive I like to apply while on the craft sheet because it doesn't stick to the craft sheet so you don't get a mess behind it. And there you have little dots of adhesive behind your word only. And then you can place it wherever you want. And this adhesive will let me move it too. And I also wanted to round the corners of my um, photo, so I'm using this corner chomper. This is a must-have tool. It does one half and one fourth inch round corners. You just slide it in these edges. Then this pops open to release all the little pieces that are left behind. Now I use this all the time. This is a must-have tool for me. You just slide the paper in the corner and chomp it and it'll go through many layers at once. I use this for kitting all the time. It goes through chipboard and grunge board and you just slide the corner in and, and chomp it. I wanted to show you this little example here on this scrap paper. The other thing I like is that if there's embellishments on the front of your card you can go chomp with this and it doesn't bump into your embellishments. It just takes the corner and chomps it. So I'm going to go ahead and round the corner of this photo here. It was an afterthought so I'm just peeling the corners up. So here you can see I just put it in a regular frame but I think a shadow box might be a little bit nicer so I'm going to go see if I can find one of those. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, just visit my blog, jennifermaguireinc.com. Thanks for watching.